Truth be told, folks, I never paid that much attention to the Sphere Globe photo thingy that's been available forever on the DJI drones, but I should have, because check this photo out. Oh, this is amazing. This is a 160 megapixel raw photo that I've put together. I'll show you how to do this. Tons more resolution than the JPEG that comes out the drone by standard. So we can zoom all the way in and see this little guy on the cliff here. What is that all about? And the reason I'm so excited by this, check this out. I never quite captured the majesty of this place with standard drone footage. Oh my goodness, look at that cliff. I'm getting dizzy just looking at this. I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this from beginners all the way through to full-on professionals who want to put together the raw photos like I have done here. It's dead exciting, so much fun, even if it's not your thing, I just want to inspire you because I feel inspired and I'm converted. I'm going to be doing this every single time I take the drone out because I love it. Right, let's get into it. Just in case you're new to these spherical panoramas, in the DJI Fly app, at the press of a button, you can automate the process of taking 26 photos. The drone spins around, goes da -da 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 26 photos that it then composites together in the app and gives you a really nice output, a JPEG. Comes in about 33 megapixels that you can then view and look around, and it is so cool, and it's all done from you, from capture through to stitching through to editing, all in one place. The results of this can be absolutely amazing. This is one from the Isle of Skye on the west coast of Scotland. Now this is straight out of the app, no editing whatsoever. Look at this place, it is so good. And because it's a 360 photo, I can look up, I can look down, oh, oh I'm getting dizzy. Oh, I just love it. Now, the only thing with this approach is that we don't have the zenith filled in, that's the top of the image. Now I'm sure with the firmware update, DJI is going to have to take advantage of the upward range of motion that this Mini 3 Pro has, take some higher up photos with the gimbal pointed up and we can fill in that zenith, but at the moment it's not possible. So I'm going to show you in a second how to do that with a fairly straightforward process in a piece of software called Affinity Photo. There's a number of free online viewers where you can simply upload your 360 photo and then scroll around and enjoy it on your computer. Scrolling around can be a little bit laggy compared with just viewing the computer on a piece of software that I'll show you in a second, but it is a great option and you can view it full screen here. It's a good starting point. On the Mac, my favorite option is this free spherical viewer. You just drag and drop your photo and here you just scroll around. It's absolutely brilliant, perfect. Just gives your computer functionality to look at these 360 photos. For Mac and PC, Insta360's free piece of software, Insta360 Studio, is actually a really great option just for viewing your photos and playing around with them. You can also convert them into little planets and do all kinds of other cool stuff that you might find a little bit harder to do with some of the other software, so perfect option for Mac and PC. Facebook's a nice place to store and view your 360 photos and you don't have to share them publicly if you don't want to. Also, a lot of video editing software has 360 photo support. So here we've imported a 360 photo into Final Cut Pro. We can scroll around, have a look around, play with the tiny planets. You can also put some keyframes in there to automate the movement around the frame. So you can video fi your 360 photo essentially. Photoshop used to have support for editing 360 photos. They don't now because of some kind of hardware issue. It's all a bit weird. Give it a miss. Instead, go straight to Affinity Photo. Amazing piece of photo editing software that we're going to use now to paint in our zenith. Here we are inside Affinity Photo. Unfortunately, it's not a free piece of software, but it's not that expensive. I should say we have no link to the company whatsoever. No commissions available to us, no nothing. I just want to tell you about it because it is absolutely the best way of editing 360 photos. Import your photo just like you would with any other piece of software and here we have our 2x1 360 photo all stretched out. Here's the magic of Affinity Photo, however. Go to Layer, Live Projection, Equit rectangular projection and not only can you view your 360 photo in this spherical state but you can edit it in this 360 spherical state. Why is that so important? Well if we go back to Lightroom for example let's say we figured out we could clone and stamp all the clouds and fill in the zenith here on this DJI photo. The issue is when we wrap that photo back up into a 360 sphere it's highly unlikely that all the joins are going to match because we didn't edit it in the spherical state. Back in Affinity Photo in our equirectangular projection view, drag the image up to look at that missing zenith. Go up to field of view, change that to 90 degrees so we can see as much of it as possible. 
Select the freehand selection tool and roughly draw around the missing part of the sky. Edit, inpaint, wait a little while and bingo, most of the job is done. We'll touch it up in a second, but that's a pretty great starting point. Repeat the process for the other part of the zenith and have a look around. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. How about we exit the equirectangular live projection, have a look at that 2 by one photo again, and you can see yeah, it looks okay. A little bit of touching up to do though, because you can see things that are a little bit rough around the edges. Back into the equirectangular selection and select the clone tool. Set your brush hardness nice and low along with a really low opacity and then you can paint over those rough edges using other parts of the sky as a reference point. Exit the live projection, have a look at the photo as a whole and yep, it looks pretty good. And you can see there, look at the perimeter of the frame. See how you would have never been able to do that manually in something like Lightroom, a piece of software that didn't allow you to edit within the sphere because there's no way you'd match up those edges and get that kind of result unless you were doing it within that 360 bubble. We've gone from beginner to intermediate, so let's take it all the way. Let's go to advanced and composite those 26 raw photographs together manually into 160 megapixel sphere, sky painted in, all of that stuff. And look at the difference in resolution. Here's a super zoomed in shot of me with DJI's standard 33 megapixel output. And here's a super zoomed in shot of me at 160 megapixels, a lot more detail. Stitching raw photographs together into a 360 degree spherical panorama is a little bit easier said than done. Now we can take all those photos into Lightroom for example, we'll stitch them together, we'll get this big stretched out output, but it's not a 360 photo, there's no data in there telling anything that that's a 360 degree photo that can be viewed as a sphere. I'll show you in a minute a way of adding EXIF data to a non spherical photo, but first things first, let me show you panorama stitcher. That does a beautiful job of stitching your raw photos together and also puts in that EXIF data to tell future pieces of software to read that image as a 360 photo. As far as I'm aware, Panorama Stitcher is only available on the Mac. It does cost a little bit of money, not much worth every penny. Alternatives for the PC, I believe, are Microsoft ICE, image something editor, image compositing editor, something like that. Do check that out, it's free or certainly very inexpensive. Uh, the go-to piece of software for professionals, PT GUI, I believe it's called, we downloaded the trial versions, it's quite expensive software. We got mixed results in terms of stitching, uh, the feature for automatically filling in the sky wasn't very good uh, and we just couldn't justify paying for it to be honest with you. So definitely if you have a Mac, get yourself Panorama Stitcher. If you have a PC, try that Microsoft alternative. Panorama Stitcher couldn't be any easier. Just drag your 26 photos in, wait for them to composite together into a Panorama export and you're good to go. The Panorama Stitcher exports your photo with EXIF data telling any piece of software it's a 360 photo. So here we are in the spherical viewer that we've got on the computer here, having a look around and yeah, everything's good to go, but we've got no sky up there. So we can't really look all the way around. Let's add that sky in and make this a complete 360 spherical panel. With your 950 megabyte TIFF output exported from Panorama Stitcher, bring it into Affinity Photo and go up to Document Resize Canvas. We need to turn this photo into a true two by one aspect ratio for full 360 degree coverage. So unlock that little padlock there, take the width number in pixels 17,886, divide it by two, put that number into the height box for pixels. In terms of placement of the original photo, bottom center is where we want it to be. Hit OK and we have our new canvas with a sky ready to be painted in. Layer, live projection, equirectangular projection, select that big ugly emission in the sky. You can be totally rough about it, you can be more neat if you want, it doesn't really matter. You get great results being rough, it gives it loads of pixels to fill in with its content aware fill technology. And in this instance, it did such a good job. I'm not even really going to have to bother here doing any clone and stamping to smoothen out imperfections in the sky.
export your new 160 megapixel panorama, bring it into the spherical viewer and things don't quite look right. That's because it's got the EXIF data from the previous original photo that wasn't tall enough. We now have a two by one aspect ratio with the sky filled in, but the old EXIF data, we need to put new EXIF data onto that photo. Here's an amazing little piece of free software called EXIF Fixer. Select the JPEG photo that you just exported from Affinity Photo with your sky all painted in. Everything's good, it's just the EXIF data's not quite right. Clear the metadata first. You don't need to delete the original images. Add metadata instantly, it's pretty much done. Then drag that original file back into whatever viewer you're using, in our case, Spherical Viewer, and you are done. You are good to go. It works, it's amazing. Hallelujah. I can't tell you how excited I was when I figured out all of this workflow. I know it seems a little bit complicated, but if you're into it, you can have a lot of fun with it and save yourself a fortune as well on that PT GUI software, which might be the right choice if you're doing this professionally, but for the rest of us, you clearly don't need to go down that route if you want to do it this way. So anyway, what a blast I had working all of this out. I'm going to just be playing around with these 360 panels for the rest of time. So much fun. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive. I know it was a little bit intense, but inspiring, I hope, fun, and ah, uh, just you can share some of my excitement. Anyway, some of you might have been doing this a lot longer than me, so if you have any thoughts or any observations, any advice, please leave them in the comments below. Great to learn from you all. Check out our free content below, our free eBooks and all that kind of stuff, premium content down there if you're interested in really getting the most from your drones. Pleasure to talk to you as always, and we will see you next time.